Welcome back to Library 21C's Introduction to 1-2-3-D Design. In today's video we're talking about uh, sketching. and uh, Sketches are two-dimensional drawings that you can create or import into 1-2-3-D that uh, you can then extrude uh, to create uh, 3D solids. So you can break away from the uh, primitives that we are given here and begin to uh, create a solid out of whatever shape uh, you want to make. Um, and it basically works like this. You draw a sketch, any shape you want, and you can either click it or and hit the gear, or you can go up here to construct and hit extrude, and by dragging this arrow up you are able to create a new 3D solid. Uh, but there's a little bit more to it than that. There's um, different techniques you can use to create those sketches, and uh, we're going to pretty much cover them all uh, in this video. Uh, so, let's start with primitive sketches, which are actually found under the primitives menu. Right now we've only used our primitive solids. We haven't uh, put down any primitive sketches, uh, but they're basically pre-made shapes, just like uh, primitive solids are pre-made solids, uh, that you can pluck down and uh, put in some parameters. So you can see down here on this square, I can uh, type in the uh, length and, uh, and width of this primitive and put it down. You'll see it is also snapping the center point. Uh, to uh, whatever multiple I've set over here. Uh, so that is one way of placing a sketch. Now uh, notice that when you place a sketch you don't have to place it uh, flat on this work grid. You can place it on any flat surface. So you can see I can put it on the side of this uh, box if I want. I can uh, also put it on an angled surface. Uh, like the side of this uh, uh, prism over here. So it can pretty much go on any surface that you like. Uh, and that makes it pretty useful when you want to extrude things at an angle. Uh, so if I wanted an extrusion coming out of the, uh, the top of this uh, box over here, but I want it at an angle, I can actually move and rotate the sketch Oops, wrong dial. There we go. Move and rotate this sketch up from here. Rotate it like that and extrude coming outward. Like that. Now you'll notice, notice when a, uh, a, an extrusion of a sketch crosses a solid object. Up until it does, it just extrudes into a solid object of its own, but once it crosses another solid, the entire volume of that extrusion uh, turns red. Uh, and that means that it's going to subtract from the shape that uh, it's crossing. This is basically what I call a quick subtract. Um, and you are able to, uh, using this dialog over here, change that function. You can set it to actually merge with the solid if you want, becoming a single shape, like that. Or you can set it to, um, let me see, I think intersect, leaving only the part that overlapped. Or you can set it to just create a new solid, basically to ignore uh, the solid that it is crossing with. Um, so that is the, uh, the function of, a, uh, of extruding a sketch. Um, but let's get into different ways to draw them. You'll find most of those here in the sketch menu. Uh, now the first four you encounter, these are basically primitives as well, but they're a different way to draw the primitive. Um, you'll see if, uh, if I sketch a rectangle over here, it already comes with a predefined parameter. If I use the primitive kind of version under the sketch menu, what it lets me do is I uh, click on the grid or the solid face that I want to sketch on, and then I specify the first corner of the rectangle. You want to pay attention to these yellow tooltips anytime you're sketching because uh, sometimes it can be a little tricky to figure out what step of the sketch you're actually on, whether you're actually putting down your point A or whether you're still defining the, uh, the plane upon which you're sketching. Uh, so we'll put down this corner and you can see I'm able to just drag the mouse around uh, freely 
uh, to define whether this is going to be a square or a rectangle or a rectangle this way. It's the same thing with putting down a, a, a circle or an ellipse found under the sketch menu. You know, instead of doing this, if I if I use the uh, the primitive circle from here, I'm putting down where the center point is going to be and then typing in the radius in the parameters down here. If I want to be more free form, I can do this. I select where I'm drawing, I specify the center of the circle, and then with my mouse I can drag this in and out and it's a good way to sort of eyeball uh, the measurement that you want if you're trying to connect uh, maybe two different uh, two different objects with a circle or something like that. Um, but you don't know exactly how far the radius extends. You can just use this until you can see that visually the radius is extending out as far as you need it to. Let's go back a little bit and talk about the actual process of of placing a sketch. Uh, let's uh, let's start by putting down a wedge. Uh, we'll uh, talk about how you can sketch on an angled surface again. All right, we got a wedge down here. When you first begin a sketch, you know, apart from the primitives that you have up here, uh, they all follow a pretty familiar process. You select what tool you want to sketch with, and let's do a circle. Then you need to select where you're actually sketching. Are you sketching on the flat grid, or are you sketching on a solid face? like this, or like that. Let's say we want to draw a circle right over here. We click there, and now we begin to place our point A, which in a circle primitive is the center of the circle. So I can click it here, and like that. Now after you've drawn your first sketch, you are still in sketch mode, meaning that if I just click over here, I'm going to draw another circle and another circle. It is not until you hit this green checkbox that uh, you will tell the program that you are finished with drawing. Otherwise you're going to keep clicking and, and keep creating uh, more sketches in sketch mode. Alright, uh, we'll keep that here for now. Let's go on to uh, different ways of drawing. So we have uh, we have the ellipse, we have the polygon. The polygon is really useful uh, because you can pretty much specify any number of sides uh, that will enclose and it'll give you an equilateral shape with that many number of sides. So we put down the center and you can see it defaults to a hexagon uh, but you can uh, click in here and you can type in a 3 for example. Actually if you move your mouse away it'll, uh, it'll unfocus that box so sometimes it's best to uh, tab into it. Uh, so I put down a 3, and you can see that it gets me an equilateral uh, triangle with uh, the radius that I'm specifying with my mouse. Uh, likewise, I put down a 4, and it gives me a square. Put down a 5, gives me a pentagon, and so on. You can put, you know, a 12-sided uh, piece in here if you want. Um, really, any number of sides that you want to specify. Uh, so that's what's cool about that primitive uh, sketch polygon tool. Now eventually we want to get away from primitives entirely and begin drawing fully custom shapes and that is what the tools polyline and spline under the sketch menu are for. Now let's begin with polyline. Now what polyline does is it creates an enclosed polygon of many sides composed of line, straight line segments. Polyline will always draw straight lines. Um, and once you enclose it, you will have to hit escape to get out of drawing mode. I don't know why the green checkbox doesn't come up under polyline sometimes. But once you enclose that, you'll see it's a regular old sketch that we can extrude. Now let's go back to different drawing techniques here. Uh, again, let's go to polyline, let's draw on the grid, and you can see the moment I begin drawing, look at this arc that extends out from the southern direction as I move the mouse this way, that uh, number in the degrees box gets bigger. Um, and then as I get further away, the number in the distance box, labeled with the millimeters, gets bigger. Uh, you, can, uh, you can type numbers in here. So I know that I need a uh, line segment that is 45 millimeters long. And um, in order to uh, actually keep this, see the moment the program detects just a little bit of mouse movement, it's going to snap back to where the pointer is. Uh, so you actually have to press tab to lock in that distance. 
Notice how a little yellow lock appeared under that box, and now it uh, passes me over to the uh, to the degrees. Now, if I don't know exactly the degrees I want, I can move the mouse around, and as long as that distance measurement is locked, no matter how far away I move the mouse, unless I click the uh, middle mouse button, let me hit tab again, uh, 35, we're going to put in 45, tab, there we go, it's going to keep it locked. And I can do the same thing uh, with the uh, with the degree mark as well. So let's say I need a 60 degree angle, and I hit tab. Now when I move the mouse, it only snaps me to line segments that have a, have a uh, length of 45 millimeters and a degree of 60 from one of the perpendiculars. Um, so I'm just going to click, and that moves me on to my next line segment. And I can draw those free form, or I can uh, tab type them as I want. Um, notice that uh, occasionally your line will snap. Uh, how there's a, notice how there's parallel symbols. They're going to pop up right around here once I hit a parallel right there. So that'll snap to keep the line parallel. It kind of assumes that you want that guide. Um, or sometimes it'll uh, draw an alignment over there in alignment with the midpoint of, uh, of this line here. Uh, or it'll snap to the grid. So there are various ways that the program tries to guide you in uh, creating, um, you know, kind of equilateral shapes, but once you enclose it, you have the uh, the final sketch. So that's polyline. Uh, spline works in a very similar way, only uh, the difference is that when you put down a point in a spline, now you need at least uh, three points to actually do this, it'll curve around each point that you put down. Notice that this is all pretty much just mouse movement. There are no real parameters here. Uh, you can't specify the degrees of any arcs. There's no numbers to input. Uh, it's just the line kind of doing its best to, uh, to do a gentle curve around each of the points that you put down. And then you have to hit escape once you're fully done with drawing that, uh, that spline. So that's good for drawing kind of more uh, organic uh, curves. Let's look at one more thing with spline. Um, when you, if you want to make a tighter turn, you're going to want to put in lots of little points. So the frequency of points that you put down uh, can also affect whether you get a gentle curve or a pointed curve or whether it hits all the points that you need. But what if you need a uh, uh, sketch that uh, that is both uh, has a straight end and a curved end. Well, then you're going to need to combine these drawing methods, and that can get a little bit tricky. And there's basically two main ways to do it. Uh, let's say we put down the straight edge first with polyline. We want to hit this green checkbox um, or hit escape to finish the sketch without actually enclosing it. Now, technically, this is not considered a sketch. 123D only considers it a sketch if it is enclosed and filled in with that soft blue fill. Then you want to come up here and select Spline. And when it says, oh, do you want to draw on the grid or a solid face or a sketch, um, you actually need to click the existing line segment to let uh, 123D know that you're actually planning to continue where you left off here and enclose this. Like that. Because if you don't, if you just sort of haphazardly click out here and begin drawing this, boy, it sure looks like those lines are connected. But when we finish, we don't get that soft blue fill, and there's nothing to select here. There's nothing to extrude. These are actually two different sketches. Uh, now, or you could call them paths, which is what I call them when they're not enclosed, that happen to occupy the same points, that happen to end at the same intersections, but are not considered one sketch by the program. The other way to edit an existing sketch is to... Uh, have the sketch selected before you even begin to draw a new part to it. So I can have this selected, then go up here to spline, and I'm already 
editing this sketch, I don't need to uh, to select it before I begin drawing. Um, so this is uh, something you'll need to keep in mind when you want to combine sketching types. Um, it's also a good technique if you want uh, your uh, your splines to end in a curved manner. So like let's say that I'm trying to draw a heart, um, you know, just your just your typical Valentine's Day heart, right? Uh, well, I can do this, but you know, this is what happens when I try to do it. it, it the spline really refuses to put down any pointed parts. Uh, but if I if I do two different spline drawing operations, you're going to see that I'm able to get a couple of points. Um, okay, I'm going to hit enter right now, and that'll uh, exit the drawing mode while leaving some of the points. Spline's a little weird, where if I if I'm drawing Whoops, that was polyline. If I'm drawing and I hit escape at any point, it's just going to erase the whole thing. Um, there, you know, there's really no rhyme or reason for when that green checkbox comes up and when you miss it sometimes. I think it might be just a little bit of a glitch in 123D. But okay, here's an existing spline. If I then add another spline to this, even though I'm not combining two different methods of drawing, I am getting a point uh, where the previous uh, where the previous spline ended. So I'm able to draw a heart like that. It's a little lopsided, I'm not an artist, but you get the idea. That's how I managed to get these points. All right, let's move on to uh, these little tools here, the uh, arcs. Um, now two-point arc is very simple. You define the plane that you're sketching on, you define the center point of an imaginary circle uh, that you're basically cutting your arc out of, and then you define the radius of this imaginary circle. Now, as you move the mouse around, it's going to draw as much of that circle as you want. If you put in 360 degrees, it's going to fill in the entire circle, uh, but anything less than that is just going to create, um, you know, whoop, is going to create an arc that follows along that circle and you're going to click to put down the point, and then you're going to click the green checkbox to let it know you're done drawing. Then there's the three-point arc, which works kind of similarly, but um, is useful in different circumstances. And it works like this. You put down your point A, you put down your point B, and then you can use the mouse to specify uh, how much of a, uh, a degree you want to give that arc. So this is useful because let's say that you have um, you know a shape like this and you want to give it an arc that connects this over here with that over here it's going to be harder to do it with a two-point arc because you have to know the exact measurements especially if they're not like straight like this if they're uh, maybe at an angle um, let's uh, let's try this we'll add one more just to just to add a twist to it okay it's a lot harder to use a two-point arc to figure out the center point between this point and that point, and then also, um, you know, the radius over here. That's about the only arc we can draw. We can't really control how shallow or curved that arc is. Now, if we use a three-point arc and edit the sketch, then we know we want to start here. We know we want to end over here, and now we can play around as much as we want with the mouse giving it, maybe it, maybe it's a, a concave uh, arc instead of going outwards. So those are the uses of two and three point arcs in combination uh, with other drawings. So at this point you pretty much know um, all the basics of sketching and you've got enough to uh, start tackling some of the sample exercises uh, without necessarily getting into these uh, very niche uh, kind of particular tools that we have here. Now we cover them in the advanced sketching video, uh, but for now we're going to cover uh, one more thing. We're going to cover a uh, split solid and split face, and uh, then we're going to try some basic sample exercises before we move on to advanced functions uh, like a sweep, revolve, and, uh, and loft, and then the, uh, the different patterns that we can make here. Um, for now, uh, just practice sketching. Uh, check out uh, split solid and split face. Try some sample exercises. And uh, then uh, we'll, we'll see you in the uh, following videos.